Hi, welcome to part two of the training. Um, what we're going to look at here is um, part one was the getting started. So this is the one we did previously, the part one that you've already looked at. Fairly short, fairly simple, but it allows you to get access to the controller. We're, we're now going to do part two. So once connected, let's look at the hardware. And then afterwards, we'll go on to um, firmware updates and check your Sedona kits and so on. So um, let's just um, let me refer you to another PowerPoint now, which is going to tell you about the hardware. And as usual, we're going to go to our EZIO 2017 folder. And if you just sc scroll down, you will see we have a EZIO training April 2016. And this is a document that we use when we do live training one-to-one. Um, -one. So as you can see, um, there's an FG32+, Plus, the same controller you have on the left, and actually on the right that's an FC20. We're not going to cover that in this training. But it is an ideal companion with the FG32. You could put 10 or 20 of those underneath the FG32 for expansion using the BACnet client, MSTP client, in the FG32. So moving ahead, um, there's the FG32. As you can see, we've got 16 inputs, we've got 16 outputs, we've got 16 universals. They could be voltage, current, or resistance. 16-bit resolution, so we can read anybody's sensors up to 500,000 ohms. And on the outputs, we've got digital outputs with volt-free contacts rated at 24 volts, at 24 VA. And we've got eight analog outputs. We also have two serial ports. The outside one, D2, is for Modbus and, and in Ocean, or and or in Ocean. Um, and D1 is for the BACnet MSTP. We have client and server, and on the Modbus we have master and slave. Equally at the Ethernet port, we have one Ethernet port. We have BACnet IP server, BACnet IP client, and we have Modbus, master, and slave. And everything I've mentioned there can run at the same time. Except for D2, you have to make a choice between N-Ocean and Modbus. You can only run one of those. Okay, and there's the spec on the hardware. You can see it's a pretty powerful little beast. We do have a more powerful version coming out in June 2017, which will be called the FS, which is the F server. And that will have even more power. It'll have a quad processor. But this controller will stay as well you'll just have a slightly more expensive FS version where you need more power. And it really is going to help you to flatten your architecture structures in, uh, in building networks. So there you go, 16 UIs, 8 DOs, 8 UOs, some LEDs, service buttons, and all HTML5 graphics on board. And that's the reason why we have um, an SD card in the control. I'll come to that in a moment. Go through these slides, have a look at the power supply requirements, have a look at some of the wiring, and then take the cover off the controller, have a look at some of this stuff that's in here. Uh, you can see the jumpers here. You can see jumpers on the outputs. And you can see the SD card here as well. Little wiring diagram there, little summary of the inputs and outputs again. Now looking more detailed on the universal inputs, how they're wired, equally on the outputs. So I recommend you just study this document now before we go to the third session. So that's a quick look at the um, second session, looking at the hardware to get you started.